Idaho Falls Pediatrics, where you supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy. Good morning from me. Good afternoon to you. Hi, thank you for talking with me today. I'm so happy to. I feel like the Truman Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Yep. <laughs> it's snowing here, but it's probably way warmer there than here. It's definitely the opposite of snowing. It's about 90 degrees and really warm and muggy and beautiful. So I'd love to have a snowball fight with you. <laughs> well, some snow to you. Thank you. We get started with the questions. Well, should sure. we get started with the interview intro thing? Let's do the interview intro thing. Okay. I'm ready. Hey guys, welcome back to Seven Questions with Emmy. I'm Emmy Ian, and today I'm chatting with Terry Erin. She's the owner of the Australia Zoo and is dedicated to animal conservation. And you also can catch her and her kids, Robert and Bindi, and Crikey, it's the Irwins. And I've interviewed Robert and Bindi too. You're so cool. You've got us all. You'll be interviewing Grace next, except she's 20 months old, so she doesn't say a lot of words. I'll still interview her. Oh, you're a good, good human being. Thank you. Should we get started with the questions? Let's do it, Emmy. Question number one. What is your favorite thing about running the Australia Zoo? I think my very favorite thing about running Australia Zoo is that I get to live here with all of the animals. So Bindi and Chandler, Grace, Robert and I all live where we can hear tigers roaring in the evening and we can hear the beautiful birds waking up every morning. And I feel really blessed. It's like living in the most beautiful place in the world. Do you ever worry about getting so close to crocodiles or dangerous animals? I think it's a good idea to be careful around dangerous wildlife and, and you should worry a little bit. But once you learn the rules of animals, it's like learning the rules of driving. You wouldn't just hop in the car when you're a kid and drive to the store. You learn how to drive. And when you learn that crocodiles just live in the water and snakes are more afraid of you than you are of them, it helps you learn those rules so you can approach animals safely, kind of like driving. Why are you so passionate about helping animals? I think it's important to help animals and the environment because it all leads back to all of us. So if we've got beautiful wilderness areas and, and great drinking water and clean air, then ultimately it benefits ourself. So it isn't just about protecting little woodland creatures. It's about making sure the planet's good for all of us. You have two really awesome kids and now an adorable granddaughter. What do you like most about being a mom and a grandma? I think being a mother and being a grandmother is the best part of my whole life. I think um, Bindi and Chandler are, are super, super good parents. Grace is a lucky little girl and she's growing up at Australia Zoo and she's just so fun, loves wildlife, loves everything, likes to boop the koalas and she really loves hanging out with the tortoises and just gets exciting about so, so excited about life every single day. And then Robert, of course, is now 19 years old and he's a manager at Australia Zoo and he's doing more work with crocodiles and his photography. He's got a new photography book out. And I'm just so proud that they've grown up to do what they love and that we still work together as a family. Where did the idea to come um, from to open the Australia Zoo and what is your favorite animal at the Australia Zoo? Oh, well, I tell you, when Steve was a little boy, his parents decided to open what was then called the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park because they wanted to make sure that they could afford their hobby, which was caring for wildlife. So they charged 60 cents, I think, for adults and 40 cents for kids way back then, just so they could help cover the costs of helping little animals. And then when Steve and I got married in 1992, we soon in the next few years changed the name of the zoo to Australia Zoo and grew it to the 700 acres that it is today. So it started small, but our intentions are still to help protect wildlife and wild places. And here at the zoo, I think my very favorite animal is DJ the white rhino. 
DJ is so funny because he's this great big rhinoceros, but he kind of acts like a Labrador. He loves scratches and he'll lay down so you can scratch his belly. And he's like over two tons of animal and just hilarious and silly. That's so funny. What can we do to help endangered animals? I think we can all help wildlife. The biggest thing you can do is to not purchase wildlife products. So nobody wants to buy any leather from crocodiles or fur from wild animals or any kind of trinkets, because when the buying stops, then the killing can too. So we want to make sure no animals are are hurt because the wildlife belongs in the wild. So that's the biggest thing you can do. But there's lots of things you can do every day to make a difference on the planet. You know, turn off the water while you brush your teeth and recycle and have a bird bath in your backyard. All these little things that you do add up to making great big changes. And we always say that Steve was one person who made a difference on the in the on the planet and you can make a difference as well. Have you ever been to Idaho and tried our famous potatoes? I have been to Idaho. I will have to tell you Your potatoes are amazing, but the best part of visiting Idaho for me was when I was eight years old, I stayed at a hotel that was near the zoo and I could hear the lions at night. And when the lions would roar, they'd go really loud. And I thought, it is so amazing to be sleeping where you can hear lions. And now every night, I can hear the tigers make exactly the same sound. So I think my love for big cats started in Idaho, of all places. I love Idaho. It's a beautiful state and right next to my home state, Oregon. You can come and um, stay at our house and we can see you guys. And maybe you can bring an animal. Uh, You know what? I think what I should do is just bring a tiger so we can all listen to one roar at night. Okay, but we might need to put it in the backyard or something. I think it would love your backyard. It's snowing. (laughs) So we have some, I have three, a couple, well, I have a couple of bonus questions. There might be a little bonus hard, but you lived in America and Australia. What is one food you can only get in America that you love and one food you can only get in Australia that you love? Okay, so I would say for Australia, it would be what we would call a savory pie. So like you can take anything you love, like veggies or anything, and cook it up in a nice pie with a pastry. And it's not like apple pie because it's savory. And it's really hard to get that in America. Um, And I I, I think I could make a list for American foods that I miss. So one of the things my sister does is she sends me the giant marshmallows and the chocolate and the gingerbread, not gingerbread, uh, the s'mores crackers. Yeah. Say it for me. Graham crackers. Graham crackers. See, I've been away from America for 30 years, so I'm losing my mind. (laughs) Um, Okay. And the graham crackers. And then we can make s'mores, which you can't really do here, obviously, because I forgot what graham crackers were called. Yeah. But Bendy told me hers was goldfish. Yeah, she does for real love the goldfish. And speaking of gingerbread, they're doing gingerbread goldfish for the Christmas season. So there's some intel you'll want to check out. Your husband was an awesome guy who helped a lot of animals. What did you like the most about him? I think what I love most about Steve was that he was just fun. He approached life like... um, like a kid, you know, where you're just fascinated with everything and he never got tired or bored or took anything for granted. He just loved every day. And he would be as amazed at a beetle on the front porch as an African elephant. He just marveled at everything. And I think it's so important to remember when we go through life to appreciate everything, even the little things, and not just get in the habit of, oh, this is what I do every day, but to marvel at all the little things like Steve did and to always try 
try to make a difference. So by the end of the day, if you can do something kind for someone that makes their day better, then you're a little bit like Steve. You know, Steve was always making us laugh and smile and and we were just amazed at everything he did. So I think we can all be a little bit like Steve. Can you share a piece of advice that might help me or our viewers? Well, me and our viewers. Yeah, I think it was interesting to me because my dad was a police officer for many, many years. And the thing he always taught me was an interesting saying. He said, question authority. And I thought, why would he say that when he was a police officer asking people to follow the law and not question, you know, um, we can't have a discussion about whether or not you stop at the stoplight. <laughs> you just have to stop there. But I've learned as I've gotten older that what that means is just because someone says this is the way it is doesn't mean you can't question it. So we have a place called the Steve Irwin Wildlife Reserve, and it was in danger of having some very sensitive habitat mined. And while we do need mining in the world, we shouldn't mine everything. So instead of letting that happen, we questioned authority and we argued that this was such a sensitive place, it should be protected. And it was. So now the Steve Irwin Wildlife Reserve is one of the most protected places in the whole world. And that all happened, I think, because of that really good advice, which is question authority. Thank you so much for talking with me. Thank you, Emmy. It's been a real pleasure. And I'll let you know as soon as Grace is ready for her interview. Okay. She just okay. will be able to answer um, a couple questions. We can shorten it down for her if she needs Okay. To. We'll practice. Thank you, Emmy. She just needs to say like one word. Maybe, maybe more than that. But... One. Okay, great. We'll work on that. We'll find her favorite word and we'll build those questions around it. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for watching. Remember, new set of questions and interviews are posted every Thursday. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Love you guys. Bye. Idaho Falls Pediatrics, proud of you supporting kids in our community and seven questions with Emmy.